like to thank everyone for being here, uh, whether in person or virtually. We have some folks joining us uh, virtually. Uh, so thank you all for being here as we are gathering uh, to accept the proclamation issued by the uh, Ramsey County Board of Commissioners and also from uh, Minnesota Governor Timor's uh, office. So it, it's, it's, it's such an uh, honor to, to be able to have this uh, for the community. Um, I also would like to thank uh, Sierra for uh, her effort and energy and her time uh, initiated this and making this possible. We would really appreciate your leadership. Thank you very much for doing that. Now uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, our Commissioner Jim uh, McDonald for the proclamation uh, presentation. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to start off with sharing a story. I, I'll always remember the very first time I came into our past crossed, um, and that was when KOM was still on Jackson Street in Arlington. And I can remember, I, I was actually very familiar with that building at one time. It, it, it housed uh, individuals that needed supportive services, and my sister-in-law actually worked in that building, but I can remember pulling up to that building, and it had been empty for many years as, and was in pretty tough shape. And, and, um, you know, walking through those doors, you could see that, you know, people hadn't maintained it for a long, long time. But almost immediately, you could feel the radiant warmth and love and caring coming out of that building for what was happening in that building. And that was where KOM really got established. And under, you know, Menard's commitment to his community and to our community to really help support people to be successful, to be able to self-determine in their lives. And, and our past crossed so many times in so many different ways. Relationship building, to be able to make changes and work together to benefit all of us. And that was Menard's strength. That's what he brought to the table. And today it's with uh, a heavy heart and some sadness that I'm a part of a celebration and a legacy that we will all remember for a long time. And we have a proclamation here, but I wanted to invite um, Commissioner Tristis Mattis Castile up, who's been a partner with mine on so many things. I've talked about partnership. So I invite Trista to come up and actually present the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You are so well-spoken, and it is a huge honor to present this proclamation. And I get really emotional. So it's, it's um, and it's because I honor your loss for your husband and your father and a leader in the community. But as Jim said, his legacy will live on forever. And so this is just a small appreciation of us as leaders to honor his legacy, but also a commitment to carry his legacy forward in our work and our commitment to the current community as well. So, whereas Marn Saw was born on September 23rd, 1970, to Pastor Winner and Mrs. Pa Saw T in Totten Township, which is the Tenasserim Plains of the Corinne State of Myanmar. And whereas in early 2005, Marnar Saw fled the fighting and oppression of the Corinne people in Burma and the refugee camps in Thailand and settled in St. Paul, Minnesota. And whereas, as one of the first Korean refugees to settle in Minnesota, Marner Saw committed himself to helping his fellow Korean refugees with starting new lives in Minnesota by volunteering for several years at the Korean community of Minnesota in various leadership roles from secretary to treasurer to superintendent. And whereas, Marner Saw worked diligently to help establish the Korean Organization of Minnesota as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And whereas in 2009, Marner Saw became the social services coordinator of KOM and specialized in assisting vulnerable Karen clients with immigration services. And whereas Marner Saw transitioned to a new role at KOM in 2019 as a family assister, which allowed him to continue his work with new Karen arrivals to Minnesota. He also served as an elder program coordinator during this time. And whereas Marner Saw passed away on October 2nd, 2020, due to complications from COVID-19. 
And whereas Marner saw will be remembered as a compassionate and generous man who was strongly devoted to serving the Korean people and preserving and celebrating the Korean culture, and his leadership will have a lasting impact on his family and the Korean community in Minnesota. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners declares October 2nd, 2020 as Marnar Saw Day in Ramsey County, and be it further proclaimed that Ramsey County Board of Commissioners recognizes and honors Marnar Saw for his admirable leadership, visions and contributions to the Korean people in Minnesota, and hopes that the Marnar Saw's inspiring life will serve as an example to motivate future generations of Korean Americans in Minnesota to serve and celebrate their community. Thank you everyone for being here today um, and for, for having me be a part of this um, program. Um, you know, I, I'm close to uh, repeating Commissioner Matas Castillo's experience up here of being um, getting emotional, but um, I will try not to be. Um, I have served um, as Executive Director at the State Council on Asian Pacific Minnesotans for about eight years now. And prior to that, um, I uh, worked at Hmong American Partnership. I actually started out at Hmong American Partnership as a college student. Um, and then I transitioned into working at Hmong American Partnership when the first Karen family started um, arriving in the state of Minnesota. Um, and so when I think about Marner Saul and why I as executive director pushed for the governor's office and you know, worked with my colleagues, commissioners, uh, Matos Castillo and McDonough to um, you know, make the Ramsey County Proclamation happen, the reason why is because I remember the very early days of the Karen Minnesotan experience. I mentioned earlier that I am also a refugee myself. My parents brought me to the United States when I was four years old. I remember too vividly what it's like to be a member of a refugee experience community. And I know through my own personal experiences that in the early days of a refugee community's life in America, the emotional and the psychological and the physical burden of being a leader is so, they're so heavy. You know, you go to sleep and you think about your people, you wake up and you think about your people, and you're not asking for the sun, the moon, and the stars. You're asking for others to treat your people with dignity because they have gone through so much. They have fought civil wars. They have existed for decades in the refugee camps waiting for a better day, sometimes not knowing whether that better day is ever going to arrive in your lifetime. But you strive to finish a day and you hope that that better day will come soon. And so when you get to America, you think, you know, the, the, the most difficult parts of the journey are over. I'm in the land where the sky is the limit, right? I'm in the land where one can overcome the circumstances of one's birth. And then the pandemic arrived. And um, I know that with Marner Saul, you know, because of the work that my office does with KOM and with just leaders in the community, um, we know and we expected that he would have been fighting for the people, that he would have responded to all of their calls for assistance up until the moment when he lost his personal battle with COVID. And so it is, you know, in the spirit of that, you know, recognition of how he dedicated his life to the people, and more than anything in America and in the state of Minnesota, how he dedicated his life to maximizing the chances that little Americans of Karen ancestry will succeed and will thrive and will actually be able to live that life of dignity that he and so many others have fought for. That when my office put together the language for the proclamation, I, I hoped that when the proclamation is done, that it'll bring some uh, relief to the family members and to the leader, uh, the leaders in the community, as well as the community abroad, right? Um, and so today I brought um, the proclamation that um, was supported by and signed off by the governor here in the state of Minnesota. 
um, as executive director at the state council, this means a lot to me because Minnesota is the city on the hill for so many refugee experience American communities um, throughout the nation. It is here that we have the largest urban concentration of the Hmong Americans, another refugee experience community. It is here that that community has found, you know, its own American spirit. And so my hope, and I have every reason to believe that that hope has already come to fruition. It's my hope, and will always be my hope, that our current Minnesotan community will have a very similar experience. Um, and that someday, um, young Karen Minnesotans will probably sit in my you know, office as executive director, sit in offices as county commissioners, and they will tell the story of how out of the ashes of civil war and whatnot um, was reborn the spirit of the people, but this time in its American form. And so thank you so much for the opportunity. And I, um, you know, uh, if the governor sees this, I hope he will forgive me for not reading the proclamation out loud, and that's because I, I chose to dedicate my time to just sharing a little bit about my own story and why our Karen Minnesota community, Minnesotan community is so near and dear to my heart. And so um, to the uh, wife and to the daughter, thank you so much for um, lending your husband and your father to the state of Minnesota. Um, without him, we could not and would not be the state that we are. We depend on leaders like him whose heart is as big as the universe and whose patience with all of our day-to-day -day challenges is as long as the Mekong River, which you know is the river between um, you know, Laos and Thailand. And I always think about that because there's a saying among, uh, may, all of our, may we be as patient as a river is long. And so I wanna thank you for um, lending your husband and your father to the great state of Minnesota and the proclamation um, you know, comes to you um, from the governor in that same spirit. And I apologize that we don't have two copies of the proclamation, but I hope between you and KOM you can decide where it's best to put the proclamation. So thank you, thank you, and um, may we all see better days uh, ahead very soon, so thank you. And again, I'm Alexis Walstead. I'm the other co-executive director at the Karen Organization of Minnesota. And um, there's been so much said already. So I just want to um, take a moment to once again thank um, Sia Her from the Council on Asian Pacific Minnesotans for first approaching us with this um, idea to request a proclamation. And I would just like to give um, really heartfelt gratitude to the governor's office, um, Governor Walls and, and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan and their team, as well as um, Commissioner McDonough and Commissioner Mez Castillo and the entire Ramsey County Board of Commissioners uh, for, for enthusiastically receiving this request and, um, and wanting to honor Marner Saw. Um, I just um, uh, had an opportunity to work with Marner at KOM over the past, um, eight years, uh, and um, I know that he just did so much for the Karen community in Minnesota and globally, uh, as we've all heard today, uh, and I, I just want to acknowledge that he also did a lot for the, the community in Minnesota, and um, I just think it's, it's really important and meaningful to receive this recognition, um, not just from the Karen community, but from all Minnesotans in honor of all of the contributions that he made to our state. Um, I think most people I've met who have some sort of connection to KOM or the Karen community here um, have a story about Marner. And, and I've heard even when people travel back to, to refugee camps um, in Thailand, people talk about Marner. And um, there's always a funny story or just a time that, that he helped them um, with whatever they needed without asking for anything in return um, or an event that he invited them to in the community and made them feel welcome. And it just um, really warms my heart to know that he touched so many people. And, um, and we're just really heartbroken that um, he's no longer with us. It's still really hard for me to believe um, while we're all working from home that, that when we return to the office, he won't be there. Um, so I just want to thank you all again for, for being part of this event today, and thank you to everybody watching. Um, and it's, it's my honor to invite up um, Musette, Marner's daughter, um, 
whom I have also known for a very long time. She was one of my first friends at KOM. So um, just want to thank you for making me feel welcome uh, at KOM and invite you to come up and share a few words with us. Um, firstly, I would like to thank everyone for giving their time to attend or to watch this event for my father. Um, thank you to the executive director, the government office, and Ramsey County and many others who initiated this plan and recognize the works that my father has done. <clears throat> thank you to KOM as well for everything that you have did, everything that you have done for my father and especially making his time working at KOM always memorable. He was always passionate about helping others here in Minnesota and those in Thailand, and he was always doing his best. I am very thankful and very honored that you guys came together to make this day happen. Thank you. Hi, um, again, I'm Jesse Fino, uh, the director here at the Urban Village, and uh, today I am a humble ally and uh, really honored um, to be a part of, of these proclamations. I've always been uh, really touched um, by the saying, the, the words of Cornel West, who says, I am who I am because somebody loved me. Um, and I think that I am who I am because this community loved me. And, uh, I am who I am because Marner loved this community and created this community um, to be the welcoming, loving community that it is. Uh, and so it is with the utmost gratitude um, that we uh, express today for, for Marner and, and the love that he shared in this community and how that has helped shape this community um, to build a foundation for this community that uh, is, is solid. And, and this community is strong and it's growing and it's resilient. Um, and so for that, uh, we are so grateful and I'm so humbled uh, to be able to, to be a part of this um, today, but, but also to, to celebrate um, his life with you today. So. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Um, it's really an honor to have uh, folks from the county and the state uh, here in our space today. Thank, uh, that's pretty much for the day. <laughs> I would like to once again thank everyone for all of your hard work and uh, for acknowledge, acknowledging uh, and, and recognizing uh, the life of Manuso. Uh, I would like to thank the family, uh, commissioners, uh, board of commissioners from MC County and the state, uh, and see you here for everything you have done. Uh, and everyone uh, watching us from uh, virtually from uh, Zoom, thank you all for being with us today, and thank you, Brother Kusa, for uh, arranging uh, the, the technology. Uh, he is the one I always go to when, when I need help with uh, IT and, and technology. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, brother, for allowing us to use the space uh, for this ceremony. Uh, with that said, I think uh, our we'll, uh, ceremony uh, adjourn here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ตาสึกตอบุทอเวลปกตอตะดือบาปะตาดอโควิด19 ขอยอดอนกบาติคุณสุทอบอดอสุกิติมากะชอจุนิลอตาอุตาดือเฮเวทอเวลีบาสฮาตนากิตะกาลบะลอกเลตะนุดะปะเวนิปกบาตรอส